All right. For those of you watching this, you're probably home gamers like myself. So, little bits of cut out of things like this scrap. They're not garbage like they would be for a big shop or they just go to metal cycle. Now, go oh, look. An angular spot here I need to fill in and tie to this other bit. Partly a side of an ugly spot. Partly. It's gonna add a bit of strength. So what so you can't see is I'm offsetting this slightly so I've got some room to actually add some weld without just building on the surface. So while it's tempting to do that, then if you grind it to make it look nice and smooth, because you're learning, your welds are gonna suck. You're not going to have any room to do any grinding. You're just going to grind your weld out and have something that's held on there with a wish and maybe a bit of bubble gum. So, a nice piece that I got lucky. It's actually almost the right profile on the bottom. It's pretty much perfect. Quite possible to cut it off of this. Yeah. Use our little cheapy layout tool. I don't think we need to be precise enough to use a scribe on this one. And there we go. Now I have to make one cut. Well, that's pretty easy and pretty quick. And this, instead of going to scrap heap, now it's useful material. Put it up against what I feel, give it enough room, build up some weld. Trace that profile. Now, you can either remember, you've got to cut on the inside of that line, because unlike a scribe line, a little sharpie is, well, they get pretty fat in the tip when they get worn down. Or you can give yourself a little note, maybe an arrow, and that arrow is what you like to put on there. They're proper welding ones, but we're home gamers. It's what works for us. So I know on both of these, I'll have to cut on the inside of that. That's the line I want to match. The inside profile, not the outside, or it's going to be too big. You can get away with from that by using a scribe, because that scribe line is so thin, it doesn't matter, your fit-up's going to be perfect every time, but scribe's not always the fastest tool, and you also are marking up your the steel you're going to be using, so using the wrong spot, it can be pretty glaring that it's there. Yeah, we're going to get to cutting. All right, you will notice that my bench is a disaster. Yours might look the same. If it doesn't, you're either a neat freak or you haven't been doing much work. Prepare for your bench to look like this. Anyways, you'll note the way I have this clamped in the vise. Left my self clearance. There are two reasons for that. One, pain in the ass when you start making a cut and you're <laughs> the uh, gearbox on your grinder hits something and screws your cut. Might even blow up a cut, a zip disc on something like that. The other reason? I clamp it like that because human beings are very good at making straight lines down. We let gravity do the work and we're pretty good at lining it up and you get a, get a pretty good sight with it. Granted, you'll be using a face shield. You might find your face is getting a bit of sparks. Things to watch out for. Look at these things down here. Those are my legs. My legs have pants on them. Well, these pants are cotton-based and should smolder when ignited. I also don't really want to blow holes in my pants or catch my pants on fire. So, make sure your legs stay out of the, uh, the spray of sparks there and take it in bits. If you feel your pants warming up, it's because you're starting to catch them on fire. Most people, when they're, doing, when they're welding, don't catch on fire from welding, even using oxyacetylene. Most people catch on fire from using a zip disc. Be aware.
here and what we've done that right there is what I was talking about note that through here we've left enough gap to build up a nice bit of weld probably even leave it in without having to grind it because one thing you never want to be called is a better grinder than welder you can learn how to weld better it will make your life better you won't find you're having to wear a respirator as much to avoid the black one and over on this side, we have done the same. Now that little quick panel I made, sure ties everything in nicely, looks fantastic. There we go, on to the next. Now you see, because of those three little tacks, or two in this case, I'm able to easily remove that panel and deal with the dilemma. Now I've been trying to figure out how to get into this ugly little area in here. Give that a bit of paint. This is part of the problem of working with scrap steel. Sometimes you don't get to do things the way you want to. Now, previously I was profiling these to match that. Now, with this filler plate, oh boy, that'll give more than enough strength. I don't have to do that. So what I'll be doing is marking this out and basically cutting that section off. Now, because it's on a bit of an angle, a bit of a challenge, what I'll be doing is I'll be, rather than trying to cut exactly to it like I normally would with a zip disc, I'll be cutting near it. And I'll use a flapper disc or another grinding wheel, and that'll get me right onto it. So, there you go. Always think about how you're going to access things after the fact to paint them if you need to paint them, or if you need to clean mud out of them or anything. Nothing worse than building something into a box and then realizing it's just going to sit in there and rust, or it's going to trap water and debris, and it's going to less... Shorten the life of your bumper. You might notice I do a lot of tacking and not that much finish welding. Well, that might be because I come at it from the perspective of a fabricator. But realistically, what it is is that's not too bad a weld. 
there, eh, not so bad. Going it down and under here, that gets to be kind of tricky. Well, I can take a bumper off. And if I can take a bumper off, there's no point in finish welding it in place. Pack it very securely, but again, so you can cut those welds should you need to remove a panel or change something around or anything like that, because trust me, you will build some wacky things when you're first starting. But I can pull this bumper off and I can get it in a position where I can comfortably see that whole weld, have good lighting on it, see what I'm doing, and lay a nice bead in there. Get good penetration, not have anything too wonky, and also make sure that that surfaces, that both surfaces are nice and clean so I don't get too much porosity. Well, you really don't want any. So, that's why you'll see a lot of tack welding. Plus, there might be an issue with the weld down the side there where that plate's hitting it and not quite sitting the way I want to. I don't really know unless I, until I can turn that over and look at it. So that's what we're gonna do.
All right, let's see how these turned out. Not too bad, considering it's been a long time since I've welded anything. But, not perfect. You'll find as you get to be a better welder, you're gonna be a lot more judgmental on how well your weld, welds look. Again, pretty darn good considering uh, it's been a very long time. But either way, those will do. They don't have to be perfect on this one. They just have to be good.